Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week we're talking about Season 3, Episode 16, titled Teresa. And if there was only something that gave us a warning last week on what this episode was going to be about... <laughs> we just didn't catch it though. No, it just it just slipped right through. <laughs> like didn't even notice didn't even notice her name. It originally premiered on February 13th, 1987. It is written by Pamela Norris. So this is the only episode she ever wrote. But it is directed by Virgil Vogel. Now we you may recognize that name because we just talked about him. He directed Cuba Libre. I don't think that's a good sign, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> good news is he's got two more episodes coming. Good news as in sarcastically good news or <laughs> yay. <laughs> yeah. Yay. You know, I'm I might buck the trend here on this episode. I might be the odd one out, but I actually kinda like this episode. I so... don't mind this episode. I like this episode. I think it's okay. <laughs> the little fake I'll laugh save my John. for the end. <laughs> <laughs> John's like, I'm gonna surprise you with my comments. <laughs> <laughs> I like a little mystery <laughs> in my final thoughts. <laughs> All right, John. Like I mentioned, it's a little short on music, but but I'm enjoying both the band names that are in this week's show. We have Jewel by Propaganda. Propaganda we've al- already seen in our music previously with their song P Machinery. They are a German sub uh, synth pop group from 1982. Because we've already seen them, some of this ma- information may be uh, redundant. The band was formed by Ralph Darper as a trio with Andreas Thien and vocalist Susan Freetag. They would add composer Michael Mertens and singer Claudia Bruken when they would sign with Trevor Horn's ZTT Records. At that time, they would relocate to the UK and they would have some initial success with their first couple singles, one, uh, one in which being Dr. Mobuse. But they would kind of take a back seat to ZTT signing Frankie Goes to Hollywood, who would end up being like out of the blue success. Now so, I remember this band. I Now I remember because not only were they in it, but I remember it being a thing with Frankie Goes to Hollywood too. The record label, Trevor Horns, was spending all of his money that he had on Frankie Goes to Hollywood because they were just blowing up and because of that it de- it delayed propaganda's debut album it delayed even when 1985's the secret wish came out it was critically acclaimed and they were popular but they still weren't getting the support from the record label like they probably should have so they eventually in 86 and 87 would go to court with ztt in which their lawyer would basically tell them like if you continue with this record contract you'll never make any money with this company you'll basically be working for free and it's not surprising to find out in the 80s in the birth of the one hit wonder this is one of those bands that would sign a deal and be like yeah hey guess what the record label owns literally everything claudia brukin would actually go solo the rest of the band would eventually legal trouble would end with them getting out of their record contract and in 88 they would sign with uh, virgin they would have some limited success probably nothing is ever as big as what would have been if had they actually had the support for their album a secret witch like they never had that type of acclaim between 98 2004 they did a reunion that eventually led to a split in 2004 susan freetag michael mertens reformed the band in 2005 and do what I would assume is a I need money tour. (laughs) We move on to Wasteland by the Mission UK. In England, they're just known as the Mission, but here in the Americas, there was already a Mission, and so they were known here as the Mission UK. Uh, I don't like it when when there's things like that. We don't call them Mission UK because they're in the UK. Like, no, 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 that's your name. So doing research on it is listed, uh, the research I was doing was listed under the Mission UK. UK. Now, they had a ton of success and are still actually still somewhat successful in the UK. Um, but because there was already in the, uh, the mission here in the Americas, and basically their popularity in the Americas was never more than the American version of the mission. And so, yeah, you've got to be the mission UK. 
They're an English auth rock band, by the way. They were initially known as the Sisterhood and were fronted by Wayne Hussey and bassist Craig Adams. They would add drummer Mick Brown and guitarist Simon Hinkler to complete the band, although the lineup would, would change consistently aside from Hussey. They would debut January 20th in 1986. They would release their first album by July, while touring with The Cure, right off the bat, they were popular in the UK and they were starting to find some popularity in North America as well. It already started out a little shaky. During their World Crusade 2 tour, where they had 41, 41 date trek that it was eventually derailed by substance abuse with the eventual collapse of an inebriated Craig Brown at an LA show. It would result in him temporarily quitting the band and for one show, for one show only, sound guy Pete Turner would fill in for him and play the show. <laughs> After that, the band would hire Chris Bocast to uh, play bass for the rest of the tour. But you know that for Pete Turner, there is one day, the biggest memory in his life was that one time he filled in for Craig Adams on uh -huh. tour. <laughs> you know that's like that's every story it, it, if you know pete turner and you've met him at a bar he's probably told you about that concert <laughs> that one time the band would actually get through it they would release another album in 80 in 1988 called children and they would enlist john paul jones former led zeppelin bassist they would continue making albums and they would continue to be successful and they would continue to get drunk <laughs> uh <-oh>. <laughs> <laughs> during their deliverance tour drunk hussy would appear on the james whale show and reports of their debaucherous behavior would uh, start to appear in the press again later in that same tour hinkler would get scarlet fever and would <laughs> lead the <to> more cancellations <laughs> and then because of personal tensions between hinkler because he uh, and the rest of the band because obviously it was his fault he got scarlet fever <laughs> <laughs> he would leave the band in montreal they actually had to get multiple people to replace them for the rest of that tour <laughs> So then we come into the 1990s and they finish up their next album early. So they have some time on their hand. <laughs> so they become the Metal Gurus, which is a glam rock tribute band that they just out of the blue decided to <laughs> okay. do for a few months <laughs> until their album was released. So then the album gets released. They get to, uh, they start getting toward 1991 and they decide to go do Metal Gurus for a little bit more because that'll fix things. Eventually they just it, it just couldn't hack it as a band and two of the members would quit and so in 91 it was the search for new band members which included them placing an ad in a magazine called the Melody Maker. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted drummer. <laughs> there really is a magazine called that. <laughs> yes. By 1993, they would have a new band. They would release a new album, which would complete their seven album deal with the with their record company. And them and the record company would agree that, yeah, we are not striking a new deal. So from then on, they would oh, almost be released independently. Um, I, I couldn't, there was no mention of them signing any big record deals after that, but from 94 to 96, they would release like two or three albums with mixed reviews. By 96, they pretty much disbanded and stopped playing together. And in 1999, they would have a reunion tour and the reunion tour would be successful enough that they would have another tour and then another tour <laughs> to the point where they are still performing and releasing albums. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to see Mission UK, you can, can you can catch them supporting Alice Cooper playing this November 2017. They will be playing material, their new album, Another Fall from Grace, which was released back in February of this year. And you know what? We'll have a good chance to see Alice Cooper because you know what? Alice Cooper, Phoenix native. Really? Yeah. Really? Wow. I had no idea. Hey, I, I will tell you this. Alice Cooper is one of the best concerts I've ever seen. Unfortunately, when I caught uh, Alice Cooper, I wasn't able to see Mission UK. He was playing <laughs> with them. <laughs> he wasn't playing with them at the time. God. Well, John, if you had opened and said, hey, there's this band that was kind of popular in the mid-80s, and they just don't know how to call it quits, I'd be saying... 
Not surprised. Not surprised. They seem to have a hard time with that. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to point out that it's not the most popular mission band in the United <laughs> States. <laughs> And that is going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Go With The Heat. Be sure to check out the website, GoWithTheHeat.com. You can find the show notes and all the links to the music that was in this episode and all the guest stars. You can find the ways to contact us. And you can also find those brand new feeds I was telling you about. You want to subscribe to Just The Music? Do you want to subscribe to Just This Week in Vice? You'll be able to find those feeds on the website. And, of course, the main feed where it has everything in it, including the separate episodes for This Week in Vice and our master episode of the show rundown and the music segment all in one show. I would also encourage you to go to giphy.com slash channels slash go with the heat. You know why? Because at the end of every episode, when we get ready to publish this, I make a GIF of Miami Vice GIF of from every single episode, a clip from every single episode that we watch. And so if you're into gifts and you're into Miami Vice, you should go check out our channel because there's a bunch of great ones there that you'll probably love and lots of things that you can use in your normal everyday chats across the internet. Giphy.com slash channel slash go with the heat. Be sure to check that out. There's a show, there's a link on our website where you can go check that out. We'd love to hear from you too. Email us go with the heat at gmail.com or tweet at us at go with the heat. We'd love, love, love to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this episode? What are your thoughts on Teresa? And what are your thoughts on the character development of Sunny? Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll catch you all next time. Bye, pal.